hit me. Johnny Mnemonic, William Gibson's data carrying courier from the year 2021, could store dozens of gigabytes of data in his head. We still haven't figured out how to upload files directly to our brains, but biohackers are finding new ways to use technology to change human bodies and push the limits of what's possible. From implants that extend our vision to chips that let us open doors. A device called PegLeg is a new frontier of privacy, storing and transferring data in the human body, but only if you can stomach a 30-minute operation. We spoke with Michael Lawfer, the biohacker and one of the creators of this new device. What do you have in your leg? I have a half terabyte pirate server that's open access. So where did the idea from this come? When the internet first started, when I was a little kid, there was so much promise. We all hoped that, and we believed, we didn't just hope, but we believed that it was going to be this thing that set us all free and it was going to fix so many things because it was going to be impossible to manipulate, impossible to censor, impossible to surveil. As we've seen, all of those things have turned out to be false. We see that surveillance is happening just about everywhere from just about everywhere that can afford it. Now, can you tell me a little bit about what the peg leg is and how it works? The basis for it is a Raspberry Pi Zero W. So it has uh, Wi-Fi built in. There's a, an antenna built into the PCB. Here is where you have your micro SD card that holds the software and is also the data repository. Um, this one's just 16 gigs, mine's 512. This unit here is a second Wi-Fi card. This allows for it to communicate to other peg legs. That's the mesh part of the network. On the back, we have the coil that allows it to accept power. This is the power management circuitry. And then this is a capacitor that acts as a power buffer that allows fluctuations in input. When you hold a battery to peg leg, it creates the network that anyone who has a internet enabled device can then connect to. Right, so it's like a Wi-Fi hotspot in that way. Whatever you have, you just look for Wi-Fi networks and peg leg will come up and you click on it and then the splash screen comes But it's up. not connected to the regular internet, right? Right. When we have a local area network, then all of us in this room can connect to it and we can talk, but nobody's gonna be able to surveil that unless they're here. And again, everything's anonymous, so how would you know who's saying what anyway? So go ahead and turn your Wi-Fi on. And then in your list of networks, you should see an open network that says peg leg. And select that. I'm in. And then if you go down, it should say browse files. Okay. And so these are all the files stored on your leg. Yeah, so far. I know there aren't many, but the one that says Omni is the issue of... Omni from 1981, where Johnny Mnemonic first appeared. Downloads pretty fast. It High is. High speed internet. <laughs> High speed anti-internet. Pegleg, as far as implants go, is pretty large. Can you tell me a little bit about what the procedure was like getting this in your leg? I've never had surgery of any kind. So it was new for me. It was a, it was a new thing. But everybody was there and they were very supportive. I was told that I did faint for a few seconds. Uh, it was less than 30 minutes. He made an incision and then made a pocket, and slid the thing up and sutured it up. This device that you now have gotten implanted in your body has already existed as a piece of physical hardware that provided this capability outside of your body. So yes. what, what are the advantages of putting it in your leg? Ah, right, this is always the key question. This is different because a wearable can be confiscated at a border. And a wearable has to have an internal power source that will fail. And wearables don't talk to each other. Part of the magic of it is that they can't compel me to turn it on. I mean, I suppose they could strap me to a chair and put a battery up to it if they understood it well enough to do that. But it's a passive device. It only turns on if I want it to. It doesn't even matter because it's an open network anyway. So anything that I would want to shroud would be encrypted and it wouldn't matter. Who are these community of people getting these devices? The grinding community is sort of a sub-subculture within the biohacking subculture. The grinders are ones who are fearlessly innovative. The, the 
the bleeding edge, as it were. And so there have been a lot of really fascinating experiments that have come out of the grinding community. I'm sure you've seen some of them, like the night vision eye drops and the flexible armor implants. These people are saying, look, it's my body and I have autonomy over it. I can do what I want. And I'm not afraid because I think this could make the world better. And then they do. Most biohackers that I've ever met are very aware that what they're doing is dangerous. You understand to some degree what you're doing. I mean, to be fair, right, you're taking a risk every time you take a medicine, every time you go for surgery in a hospital. The, the differentiation is that in the United States especially, but in the Western world, we have a terrible habit of outsourcing responsibility. Think about how many people you know who only even change their own oil or fix their own computer or void the warranty on anything they own. It's really exciting to me to realize that because of the pace which the grinders are taking biohacking, the next big innovation to come out of biology, it's equally likely to come out of somebody's garage than it is to come out of an Ivy League research institute. You're arguably best known within the biohacking community for your role as the public face of Four Thieves Vinegar Collective. Can you tell me a little bit about what that project is? Four Thieves is a collective that works to try to bring medicine and medical technology to people who don't have it. What we've done over the years is worked on projects that allow people to, again, manage their own health. Ways to manufacture their own medicines or build their own medical technologies so that they can bypass all of those problems. If what they need is too expensive or not legal where they are or just not available where they are, then they can take control of their own health and still have access to the technology which exists. People should be able to interface with the medical community and be able to have more open conversations with their medical providers and be able to audit the systems that they're putting into their bodies and be able to look at the pharmaceuticals and, and read all of the studies that were done. Couldn't someone presumably take the instructions that you're providing and mix something incorrectly even though they're doing it themselves if they don't have a background in chemistry? If I get something from an institution, it's an act of faith that that institution has the safety protocols that I would deem appropriate. And I don't get to see those or check those. If I'm at home and I manufacture a pill, I know everything that went into it. I made the pill one at a time. I know how much I had pharmaceutical ingredient went into this pill. And I closed it, I capped it, I took it, and I'm safe. Four Thieves hasn't released any data, so it's impossible to know how many people are using this or if it's been effective. But Lawfer says he and other biohackers continue to dream up new ways of using technology to augment their own capability. Biohacking has always figured prominently in science fiction. William Gibson, he made prolific use of body modifications in his stories. And oh, yes. does that influence the way you think about body hacking? When I, when I put this in, I had a moment where I thought the only thing better than witnessing your childhood dreams coming true is making them come true. And it was a great moment to sort of see Johnny Mnemonic come to life. Michael, thank you so much for joining us and telling us about the future of the internet, which is inside your leg. Well, I hope so, and a lot of other places. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks.